yesterday's theories are today's realities and that's the unfortunate situation we've been living in for well i can't even say the past 18 months it's mostly been just um forever but i guess thanks to the internet the transfer of information has become well immediate so everything that was going on behind the behind the scenes rather is now just out in the open for us all to at least see the corruption in action and like it says here white house considering requiring foreign visitors to show covid 19 vaccination proof i reported on it yesterday it was just a rumor at the time it was one of the many articles in the little coof update that we had to do yesterday uh yeah it was just oh yeah this is going to be talked about behind the scenes and i said yeah just give it a couple of days and somebody will come out and a few hours in fact, I guess that's the expedited timeline we're starting to work on all of this shit for. And um, I don't like it. I don't like it because, yeah, they're still out there in the streets in Europe. Continental Europe is really putting up a force. And even Australia, I've seen some reports of people taking to the streets in Melbourne to protest the armed military being there at keeping people locked up. And um, yeah, okay, 300 military guardsmen in Sydney, Australia. Okay, they can do a lot to a docile population, but as soon as these people start to get activated, what are 300 people going to do to thousands of people taking to the street telling you that they've had enough? We're going to see it, and um, the states and most of Canada aren't quite as well-mannered as Australia. They aren't quite as unarmed as Australia. We'll leave it there without pushing forward any further than that white house yeah considering requiring foreign visitors to show covid 19 vaccination proof which is great because i have aspirations i've mentioned this several times before many aspirations of moving down to the united states i have family in northern california and some in vegas as well and and been thinking about making a home somewhere in i don't know one of the flyover states where your money stretches incredibly far arizona Texas, Wyoming, it doesn't really much matter. One of those places there. And of course, those timelines have gotten pushed back for a multitude of reasons. And if this is going to be another one of those things, again, it's one of those things where if you want to get the jab, go for it. I, I don't really care. All of my family, my parents, my sibling, they have the jab. I don't think any less of them. I don't think any more of them because they are vaccinated. That was their decision. They wanted to do that. I'm not going to tell them to do anything that they want to or not want to do. I just provide you with the data and the information necessary for you to make an informed choice on the matter. So that's my position. If I need to state it again, if anybody's new catching this, I appreciate that for sticking around that long because, yeah, sometimes we go on tangents. But let's get to the actual facts here. The White House confirmed Thursday it is considering requiring foreign visitors to show proof of COVID-19 vaccinations as a condition for international travel. That's where it starts out. Where does it end? Uh, in order to get onto any aircraft, it doesn't matter if you're going from, if you're, say, in Florida, if you're going from Tallahassee to Miami, guess what? You're going to have to show the pass because, remember, it didn't take that long after 9-11 to install the TSA in every fucking thing you do. And it's a bitch. It's a bitch to even just fly from here in Grand Prairie down to Calgary. So just imagine how outrageous this is going to get. We will be ready when it is the right time to consider a reopening. When? When? Of course. That's according to Jeff Zentes, the White House COVID-19 response coordinator, okay, uh, told reporters on Thursday that several federal agencies are examining the possibility of issuing such a mandate. Look for the TSA, Department of Homeland Security, a whole bunch of other intergovernmental agencies, as was rumored yesterday. He appeared to confirm anonymously sourced reports that administration officials will have to present proof they're vaccinated against the virus. There's still no timetable, and we're in the United United States will resume international travel to certain countries as a number of federal officials have cited concerns about my Delta variant. And then what's the one that's running out there right now? Lambda. Oh my God, that one's going to be so much terror, so much more terrible than even the Delta virus. Be scared, be scared, be scared. Continue to get jabs in perpetuity forever. Follow a Swedish expert. Okay. I thought we were looking to Sweden as being like the template of not locking down, succeeding, and just, I don't know, facing the world norms when it comes to their caseload deaths and the rest of the science that's out there. 
And now you got an expert out there, and I'm sure that those same idiots that thought, oh, you're killing everybody but not instilling mandates, they're probably just going to be, okay, we need to look to the Swedish government because they have the right type of government that we're looking for. Swedish expert claims people could require as many as five COVID vaccine shots. Cool. Is it going to stop at five? Fuck no. No. Why would it stop at five? If they could trick you into getting five, but what would stop them from making you get 10, 15 for a bunch of different diseases? It'll never stop. It'll never stop. And now I, I don't know how to report on this because as being kind of a international channel, I'm supposed to follow the WHO according to YouTube. Okay. So, and they said, oh, uh, we need to put a pause on boosters for the time being so the developed world can get the jab. Okay, weird, but okay, um, countervailing evidence would suggest that there is plenty of vaccines out there. In fact, they expire and then they need to get tossed out. So couldn't you just, instead of, I don't know, just letting them linger on the shelf collecting dust, uh, distribute them a little bit more effectively? No? Oh, okay. Um, that's weird. That might take work and you can't lord that over everybody else in order to instill some more fear. And then you got Fauci here who this is important for my US viewers because he wants people to to get a jab third coronavirus vaccine shot for people with weakened immune systems very high priority okay that's the danger people the, the people that have the most comorbidities the people who should have been getting vaccinated to begin with and you think they need another jab can you back that up or is this just another one of these willy-nilly prognostications from lord and savior dr fauci appearing thursday at the white house covid briefing uh, Anthony Fauci said a third coronavirus vaccine shot for individuals with weakened immune systems is a very high priority for the Biden administration. Ugh. So a reporter asked, we know the, bo or the boosters are still under consideration. They said, okay, within like the span of a few days, a couple weeks ago or a week ago at this point, no, we're not going to be looking at boosters. Okay, yes, we're going to be looking at boosters. Okay, somebody took me out of context. There will be no boosters. And now uh, they're still under consideration again? Okay, I see I see the game. You guys see the game as well. There's no openness, or sorry, uh, there's more openness to act on them for immun immunocompromised people faster. Can you tell us when immunocompromised people can expect these boosters to be available? And are there any updates? Again, so the reporter prefaced this by saying they're under consideration. So when can they get them? What? That, that's not how the process works, but it is when you're in the media and you can just direct the narrative whatever way you want to pull it. Then Fauci comes up with, uh, immunocompromised individuals are vulnerable. Very good. What, what year of your PhD did you study that one out there? Oh, people with a compromised immune system are more vulnerable to infection. I'll write that down. Just give me a moment. Uh, they do not make, in general, an adequate response that we feel would be adequately protective. It is extremely important for us to move to get these individuals their boosters, and we are now working on that, and will make that be implemented as quickly as possible. Uh, because for us and for the individuals involved, it is a very high priority. But that's his opinion today, so who fucking knows? And according to ugh, this fucking creep, Baylor uh, panel van enthusiast, oh, I'm sorry, professor urges criticism of Fauci and other scientists prosecuted as hate crimes. Um, this was one of the first people, and um, it's weird how we're just going to kind, kind of circle around a common three common theme sorry through the end of this video it's something that um even i've been vocal about since the early days of my podcast this guy right here was one of the first doctors one of the first experts on the coof that appeared on the joe rogan podcast okay follow me on this one for a moment dr peter hotez he showed up and he was saying a whole bunch of spicy things about the coof that i can't say anymore on here because at the time it was yeah that's what we were thinking and then now it just turns out to be complete and utter dog shit theory he's a part of the ruling authoritarian ethic her academic class that thinks that him and his colleagues should be running everybody's lives because they are the learned ones after all okay and these are the type of guys who have the ears of the people who have the loudest megaphones this is why alternatives need to come around i was very critical of rogan when he first signed that hundred million dollar contract with spotify not because i'm jealous of the money of course not if you can get the bread go get it it's that 
he had no incentive to really push the platform forward anymore to really do anything he could just sit back just get a bunch of high profile guests and not really do anything productive anymore because when brogan was hot he was super hot and he was getting millions and millions and millions of views and then you take a look at when it's just him and somebody who's no named um the contrast between like a jordan peterson sam harris brett weinstein interview and then you take a look at him and some comedian, uh, there's a big drop off. He was very important as the platform because he would allow the people to speak, don't agree with a hell of a lot of his opinions on the things. And when he reaches out and he tries to get who he thinks are credible voices, much like Trump, he puts really bad people in very high raised positions. And this just once again kind of confirms that point, okay? So the Howard Stern of the modern age once again just, I don't know, fouled it off at the plate. A professor of pediatrics huh? and, and molecular virology at Baylor College of Medicine is urging that criticisms of Dr. Anthony Fauci and other government scientists be prosecuted as hate crimes. So could, um, under that logic, let's just, I can't stand that fucking cheddar cheese smile right above my face. If he wanted criticism of Anthony Fauci to be prosecuted as a hate crime, would old Fauci have to be charged with hate crimes in accordance with new Fauci? Or the doctors who were censored off of Breitbart's live stream, are they going to have to get censored? Are they going to have to get charged with hate crimes? This is um, incredibly dangerous, and this is what happens when you're allowed to classify anything as a, a national emergency, a national disaster, and you need to crack down on misinformation when it comes to a virus, which we're not even settled on the science completely. Anyways, you just want to suppress anybody else who tries to get in the way of what your intended goal is. A January or er, July, sorry, 28th paper in PLOS Biology titled Mounting Anti-Science Aggression in the United States. <laughs> Way to poison the well going in. Peter Hotez writes that a band of ultra-conservative members in the United States Congress, who are those exactly? Who would you point out and say is ultra-conservative? Nobody votes 100% down the conservative line. We looked at the numbers. The closest is Mike Lee, and I think he's at like 94.6% or something like that. And everybody else is uh, shades more centrist than that. So I don't know what your framing is. Again, it's just another one of those things. It's like anybody who disagrees with me is far right or alt right. Oh, and he already picks up that uh, torch anyways. And other public officials with far right leanings. I, I don't know who you're talking about. I really don't because you don't even know Wh what's an ultra conservative to this guy. What's it? What's a far rightist to him? You'll never get a concrete definition because it just needs to be shifting goalposts in order to shift blame on whoever disagrees with you are waging a well organized and seemingly well coordinated attack against prominent US biological scientists and Anthony Fauci. Uh, Hotez, who describes himself on Twitter as a vaccine scientist, pederast, oh, I'm sorry, uh, pediatrician, author, combating anti-science. What, what does that mean? Anti-science. Somebody who's supposed to be a virologist, somebody who's supposed to be a practicing doctor, should know a little thing called, oh, I don't know, the scientific method where you take two pieces of countervailing evidence, have the clear and open forum to just bang them together, and then come out with the actual outcome, and then continue to just modify and continue to critique that until you get the correct answer. But according to him, anybody who comes with just posing opinion, somebody who has different evidence, they're anti-science. They need to be charged with hate crimes. They need to be censored. They need to be thrown away. This is what we're dealing with at every fucking level in every fucking institution. When's enough enough? When's enough enough? I've been asking this for a while now. And I kind of secretly don't want the answer because I know what the answer is. You guys know what the answer is. So again, keeping on that same line, okay, so you have the CDC contradicting what the WHO wants, and then you have the White House contradicting what the WHO wants by saying that they're going to be going ahead with booster shots. That would be classified by Dr. Peter Hotez as being somehow anti-science, so does he want the White House charged with hate crimes? See how fucking insane this is? White House rejects WHO calls for moratorium on COVID-19 booster shots. Uh, the White House pushed back on the WHO's moratorium on distributing COVID-19 booster shots with the press secretary, Jen Psaki, calling it a false choice. 
again, just more rhetoric, okay, misinformation, disinformation, false facts, fake news, all this type of just fucking horseshit. Just come out and straight say it. That guy's lying. We don't agree with that. You guys can have these mythical, oh, we should have a conversation about this. We really need to continue the talk about, just fucking have the talk. Just have the talk. And now they're going to be coming after your kids. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Biden launches comprehensive vaccination effort in schools. The Biden administration said Thursday it is launching an all-out effort to get schools 12 and older vaccinated via f or this fall via the schools. I can tell you that's probably where I got, ex with the exception of a couple of tetanus shots, all of my vaccinations, like measles, maybe the mumps. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, hepatitis, um, what, whatever one you don't get from Tommy Lee's crank. Um, the C, the A and B, I don't fucking remember. That was, oh my God, like a decade and a half ago at this point. Oh, the fuck am I supposed to remember? But that's where I got it. So are they going to start slipping in the jab? Because that's what it screams to me. So yeah, they're la her launching this all-out effort. To achieve this, the administration will promote vaccinations at school physicals. Yep. Uh, send pediatricians to back-to-back -back nights to vaccinate, or back-to-school nights, sorry, to vaccinate, and provide funding for school districts to set up pop-up vaccination clinics. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's never enough. See, they'll stop completely short of mandating the vaccines. They're just going to go about it in every other weaselly fashion because the laws that are on the books specifically ban certain types of vaccine mandates. And they know that they might run into a problem and they might have it challenged if they just come out and say, yeah, you have to get the jab regardless. Otherwise, we're going to throw you in jail. There's other ways that they can do this and they're doing everything they possibly can. That's why I was so vocal about the NFL's policy. Okay. And you have people coming out of the woodworks there saying, I basically had to get the jab. Jimmy Graham right now, tight end for the Chicago Bears. He said, they made it untenable for me to continue my career without getting the jab. Ryan Tannehill said the exact same thing. DeAndre Hopkins tweeted about it, then deleted it, and then still had this, or held the same values. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams right now, uh, he's had the exact same thoughts as well. He just, he feels like he's all right without it. He just doesn't want to put his team at a burden. They were doing Doing that there the test patterns were being run in the corporate level and now they're being instituted by the government i find this abhorrent absolutely abhorrent speaking of things i find abhorrent cnn and then they fired three employees for refusing vaccination unfortunately it was the largest purge since 2017 um and based on their ratings i think that they're probably heading for a much larger layoff anyways but then again they're also launching that stupid cnn plus network and they're just gonna go ahead and cannibalize youtube so whatever if you want more of my thoughts on that and why cnn's never gonna fucking go away just take a look for the cnn plus video from a couple weeks ago cnn fired three employees thursday for refusing vaccination the largest reported purge in the company since 2017 president of the cnn worldwide jeff zucker issued a statement in support of his decision to fire in the employees citing his zero tolerance policy on this this is the world that we're heading towards. Not enough people want to push back. Not enough people want to push back. All of the people that are, it's my body, it's my choice. All of a sudden, you have to get the jab. You have to put it in your body. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> no logical consistency here. We're heading for something dangerous. And that's not just south of the border. Okay, that is definitely going to happen up here in Canada because took a look at that stuff yesterday. It's the last video that I did to wrap up the day yesterday. Um... Like 73% of people think that some form of restrictions are good. I'm very much in that 27%. Uh, I'm a rare person up here in Canada where I'm incredibly liberty minded. I get to talk with some of you guys that are out there as well, but uh, we're very much in the vast minority on this one and um, I feel like our time is up. Just like these fine people at CNN, I'm sure they were, and I'm sure they'll just go off to live whatever fruitful lives and whatever other shitty fucking companies they can go in and infest and kill off. Oh, but Zucker said via the New York Times report, see how they're all in bed with each other? God, isn't it wonderful? You need to be vaccinated to come to the office. Really? Cool. And you need to be vaccinated to work in the field. Why? With other employees. Why? Regardless of whether you enter the office or not, period. We need... Oh, we expect in the weeks ahead showing vaccination may become a formal part of the former media pass card process. 
show your papers, show your papers to go to work, show your papers to go to shop, go to sh go anywhere, and you're gonna have to show your papers. 15 days to flatten the curve. Seems like a lifetime ago. At least one person, one person who I have a incredible amount of respect, okay? He was the guy who's still trying to run shows, still trying to provide a distraction when the entire world was in a tizzy in March of 2020, okay? He was out there, he's like, okay, he got his roster together. He's like, if anybody wants to fight, that would be great because we still have shows that we want to run and we want to put on a good show for the people. And an overwhelming majority of the fighters still wanted to go out there and they wanted to put on a good UFC event to allow people to take their mind off of things. And he caught seven shades of shit for that one. But at the end of the day, guess who's laughing? The only professional sports company that ended up growing during the pandemic was in fact the UFC, mostly, if not completely, due to the cavalier attitude of Dana White. He doesn't care what his roster thinks. He doesn't care what his roster does, as long as they show up on fight day, ready to fight, ready to put on a good show. You can talk all the shit you want about in support of Black Lives Matter. He doesn't care. You can go to a fucking mega rally. He'll even bring you if you want. It doesn't matter, and that's the best way that an entertainment platform like the UFC should operate. That's my opinion, and that's why he has my unfettered support, because he's always just been this type of guy. This isn't a put-on, okay? If he was trying to be fake and phony, he'd be virtue signaling, just like Rob Manfred, Adam Silver, Gary Bettman, and Roger Goodell. He'd be joining up with those guys, just heading straight towards total irrelevancy. But no, but no, there was a lull, okay, because... I've been vocal about this as well. The first time I checked into the UFC, it was later. It was later in its resurgence, okay? I missed out on all the Chuck Liddell knockouts. I missed out on a lot of the Pride events, but I did go back and I took a look at all that kind of stuff. But the first event that I seen, I think it was UFC 96. It was Frank Mir breaking Minotaro Nogueira's arm when he had the big old staff infection on his back, setting up the heavyweight ta er, championship match for UFC 100. And I was hooked. I didn't miss a single event because the UFC consistently put on good cards. And like I said, there was going to be a through line. Like with that professor at the beginning who was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Joe Rogan was the guy who pushed me away from the UFC. When at the time, Anderson Silva was a, a walking incarnate of Jesus Christ. Nobody could fucking beat this guy. Okay. And then Chris Weidman was coming up and Joe Rogan just kept hyping him as just being the absolute monster. He Nobody was ever going to defeat him. He was just going to steamroll Anderson Silva. He was going to do all of this stuff. He was going to break records in the middleweight division. Just go back and take a look at all of the pre-hype interviews. Look at all of the different propaganda that Rogan was pushing out. And when I get told something that I'm watching with my eyes is completely different, I got to back off. And then after those two lackluster efforts, that Chris Weidman had against Anderson Silva. Yeah, he caught him with one after Anderson was just clowning around and Weidman became the championship or became the champion. And then in the rematch, uh, Anderson did his best um, Mr. Fantastic impression by wrapping his leg around Chris Weidman's. But then after that, if he was supposed to be this dominant fucking champion, how did he only defend his middleweight championship once and then lose to Luke Rockhold and then not long after that just fade into total irrelevancy? I thought he was supposed to be the second coming. I thought he was supposed to be so fucking great. I don't like being told what to do. It's pushed me out of hockey. It pushed me out of the UFC. But I think Dana White and his cavalier attitude, the people that he has on his roster right now are incredibly good. They're incredibly diverse in the best sense of the word. And it's always a good show. So I don't want to say I'm going to be diving back into it, but I do hold a great amount of respect and even more so, especially when he says things like never going to happen. Dana White will not require UFC fighters to get vaccinated. That's just the best way to run your company. Okay. I, I leave it up to the person. Don't penalize them. Don't detract from it. Let them live their own lives. Okay. Because at the end of the day, as glamorous as being a UFC fight fighter is, sorry, that's your job. That's it. Do what you need to do to be great at that specific vocation. And the rest of it, hey, you got free reign of it.
I love it. I wish there were more people like that, but because he's so successful, eh, there really is only one Dana White, and I think that's probably for the better of society, because could you imagine Dana White and Dana White clone continuing to bash against one another? I don't think that there is a venue large enough to keep those two people in it. With that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.